Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. How low will gold go before it goes high again? That's the question that this article attempts to answer in this opinion piece here from Kitco News. Gold seems to be stuck below $1,300 an ounce level for the next few months, according to ABN AMRO. The Dutch bank expects gold to hit $1,275 at the end of June and then fall down to $1,250 by the end of September. Main pressures dragging gold down in the near future will remain higher U.S. dollar and rising U.S. Treasury yields, the bank said in its Precious Metals Watch report on Friday. The gold price weakened, weakness start, started when the U.S. yields and the U.S. dollar realigned again after four months of divergence. The combination of a stronger U.S. dollar and higher U.S. 10-year uh, year nominal and real yields is a negative environment for gold prices, said ABN AMRO's senior precious metals and diamond analyst uh, Georgette Bull. Now, some of you may remember that I had posted a video uh, uh, earlier in the year predicting that gold could go to $1,100 an ounce. And uh, and I was kind of skeptical of that, although the summer months do tend to see a gold and silver decline during the seepy hot months of summer. And but this is appears to sort of, course, sort of back that up, at least from this one bank. A gold tumbled below its key psychological resistance level of thirteen hundred dollars an ounce for the first time this year last week. It continued to weaken further as markets opened on Monday. June COMEX gold futures were last trading at 1288.60, down 0.21% on the day. Bull pointed out that gold is not done falling yet and could end the year around 1250 an ounce. That's a little bit different up above, says 1250 by the end of September. So, what does that mean from September to the end of the year? We expect gold price weakness to continue in the coming weeks and months. It's likely that gold prices will fall below 1275 per ounce and test 1250 per ounce this year, followed by stabilization, she wrote. ABN AMRO's outlook estimates that the U.S. Treasury yields will rise to 3.2% before the end of 2018. The Dutch bank also projects for the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates by another 75 basis points in 2018 and 50 basis points in 2019. Now, if they do that, um, they usually do it about 25 basis points per time. So that's three for this year and two for next year. On top of that, Bull added that the U.S. dollar still has some upside potential left, but did not go as far as categorizing it as another bull run. As we don't expect this to be the start of another dollar bull run, the upside in the U.S. dollar and the downside in gold should be relatively modest. And there we go. So we will see how that happens. On a positive note, the Dutch bank views a potential drop to 1250 as an opportunity for investors to position themselves for higher gold prices next year. So they think it's going to go up next year, but how do they know? And really, I mean, other than some of the futures that we see now, um, anything can really happen that could cause prices to spike, prices to spike even in the summer months. They're saying in their third and fourth quarter of 2018, we expect U.S. GDP and 10-year U.S. Treasury yields to peak. By the end of 2018, we think it's unlikely the Fed can surprise financial markets by being more hawkish with rate hikes likely to have been fully anticipated by then. Bull wrote, The peak of growth in U.S. Treasury yields are against the background of a deterioration of the fiscal balance in the U.S. So all in all, dollar fundamentals will deteriorate by the end of this year, and this should result in a lower dollar and higher gold prices in 2019, unless they can somehow get spending under control, or at least the illusion of it. Um, they've already... The, um, tried to re um, kind of 
squash some of those spending uh, increases that were done during the latest CR that they had sent through. So if they can kind of do that and adopt something like the penny plan and get spending under control and somehow do something to get this debt, um, even if it's a, a drop in the bucket, at least, if, at least if there's some effort, then I think that could help get the dollar bowl. So that's the only thing they've got left because they keep spending this money like it's going out of style. And yes, the, the markets do anticipate moves by the uh, Fed and obviously the treasure bonds and, and the, uh, they react, the dollar index reacts accordingly. But nonetheless, I do think that if, the, if they were smart, if politicians were smart, uh, they would do something to control some of the spending and um, to uh, get it under control because that's the only thing that's left because if you can get the debt under control, at least pay, pay it down, um, then that will do a lot to boost the economy and give more com much more confidence in the dollar than what we're seeing now. Give the dollar some teeth behind it. So nonetheless, that's, that's where we stand there. So this is an article here, Kid Go News, what to think. Um, and again, it's not quite as bearish on gold as the article and the news that are reported earlier, the opinion piece that dollar, that the gold could go to $1,100 an ounce or below. But uh, they're saying that it's going to be, it's going to fall through the summer months, which means it is a good buying opportunity because I believe that even at $1,300, I believe that gold is, is uh, relatively inexpensive or uh, not as expensive really as it should be in my view. But nonetheless, It'll be interesting to see, and it'll be interesting, interesting to see what happens with the stock market as well, because if the stock market continues to go up and it pushes uh, uh, 25500 or flirts with 26000 you know, we'll see. We'll see, because anything, any kind of movement like that will have some effect on gold or silver. If it stays relatively flat and starts to bottom out, and that could happen during the summer, and then you might see some movement the other way uh, with less confidence in the dollar and in the markets. And then that's where the safe havens like gold and silver come into play. Post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend the multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.